I'm a creature of hyperfixation. I always have been. I always will be. I say this mostly as a look into my own brain and why I decided to do two episodes in a row about musicians that passed away before they can ever really get started. A song I've been hyperfixating on here lately is the certified 1986 bop, We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off, by Jermaine Stewart, which just celebrated its 35th birthday. I wanted to do a Pride episode, but Christ, where do you even start? I decided to cover Jermaine Stewart because everyone knows the song, but not many know the story of the icon behind it. So let's change that. On September 7, 1957, William Jermaine Stewart was brought into the world. Born to Columbus, Ohio residents Ethel and Eugene Stewart, William was the baby of the family, youngest sibling to older brother Eugene Jr. and sisters Sandra, Leandra, and Norma. It didn't take long for William, who as a teenager started going by his middle name Jermaine, to realize how much he enjoyed dancing and entertaining, even giving other kids dancing lessons for one dollar. Things really picked up for Jermaine in 1972, when, at the age of 15, his family packed up and moved to Chicago, Illinois, where he attended Paul Roberson High School. While Jermaine found himself in a dance group, he also found himself enthralled by the show Soul Train. Soul Train, which began in 1971 as the brainchild of Chicago-based radio newscaster and DJ Don Cornelius, was a wildly well-received music program that started airing on WCIU-TV, better known as The U. Known primarily for performances by R&B, soul, dance pop, and hip-hop artists, certain funk, jazz, disco, and gospel artists also appeared on Soul Train. The original run, before its move to Los Angeles, found Soul Train airing in black and white. Six years later, in 1977, Jermaine found himself going from admiration of the show to being a part of the show, from which came the opportunity to tour as backup singer and dancer for several artists including the Shy Lights and the Staple Singers. While on Soul Train, Jermaine met and became close friends with Jeffrey Daniel and future Grammy award-winning artist Jody Watley and when the Soul Train took off on the tracks to Los Angeles, they stayed behind. But they stayed behind with purpose, as Jeffrey, Jody, and Jermaine had all auditioned for the supergroup that Don Cornelius was creating, Shalimar. Jermaine had auditioned for lead vocals, but lost out only narrowly to Gary Mumford. But Don, having grown in admiration for Jermaine, let him stay on as dancer and background vocalist for the band. Jermaine also performed background vocals for other acts like Billy Jackson, Denise Williams, and The Temptations. It was around this time that Jermaine Stewart, while on a UK tour with Shalimar, made a chance encounter that would change his life forever. As fate would have it, Jermaine met both Boy George and Mikey Craig from Culture Club and sparked up a fast friendship and it didn't take long for the Culture Club to see the massive potential in Jermaine, and they asked him to sing background vocals on their 1983 album, Colored by Numbers. You can really hear him shine on their third single from the album, Miss Me Blind, which peaked at number 5 on the U.S. Top 100. Not only did Mikey Craig take a liking to Jermaine, he actually helped him record his first solo demo tape, and in 1984, Jermaine Stewart landed himself a record deal with Clive Davis of Arista Records, a subsidiary of Sony Records. Jermaine Stewart's first album, The Word Is Out, was written and composed by Jermaine, Mikey Craig, and Julian Lindsay, who had worked with artists such as Culture Club, Stevie Wonder, and the Beach Boys. The first single from the album was the titular, The Word Is Out. And was produced by Peter Collins and supported by a video shot in Paris. 
The album peaked at number 90 on the U.S. Billboard 200 Albums Chart and number 30 on the U.S. R&B Albums Chart. Although the word is out, did much to enhance Stewart's reputation, it did not prove to be the commercial success Arista had expected. The song reached number 41 on the R&B and Billboard charts and was followed by the full album of the same name in 1985. Two other singles from the album were issued, I Like It, in Europe and the United States, and Get Over It, Europe Only. Things really picked up for Jermaine with his sophomore effort. Despite some initial success, his debut didn't prove to be the career launch pad that Arista initially intended. Jermaine's next album, therefore, was focused much more on securing radio and club airplay under the guidance of some of the hottest American producers of the 1980s. John Jellybean Benitez produced two highly danceable tracks on Jermaine's second album, Frantic Romantic, Dance Floor and Versatile. But it was celebrated songwriter and producer, Narada Michael Walden, responsible for such hits as Whitney Houston's I Wanna Dance With Somebody. <laughs> And how will I know? And Mariah Carey's Heartbreaker. Narada would go on to pen and produce the song that would forever be associated with Jermaine Stewart. We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off, supported by a strong video became an international success, riding to the Billboard Top 5 and also hitting number 2 in the UK. But we'll come back to We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off. The album quickly went on to become a million seller and would be Stewart's most successful selling album in the US. A second single was released called Jody, the inspiration of the song being Jody Watley of Shalimar. Jody reached both the UK and US Top 50. A track originally slated for the album, but went straight to a soundtrack, was the track Wear Out the Grooves, which was featured on the soundtrack for 1985's Perfect, starring John Travolta and Jamie Lee Curtis. In between albums, in 1987, he appeared in Denise Williams' video for her song Never Say Never. Jermaine's third album, 1987's Say It Again, was probably his most successful internationally. The title track became Jermaine's second major U.S. hit. In the U.K., it reached number 7, helping the album into the top 40. His next three singles were remixed by 80s pop supremos PWL, helping Jermaine secure widespread European success. Much like We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off postulated that having a good time didn't necessitate being nude, Jermaine also had the great advice of the sixth track off Say It Again, Don't Have Sex With Your Ex. The next three singles all received the remix treatment from the production company behind such hits as and Get Lucky, Don't Talk Dirty to Me, and Is It Really Love found considerable European success, particularly Germany, where Don't Talk Dirty to Me was one of the biggest selling songs of 1988, making the top five. He also performed Don't Talk Dirty to Me on the 1988 episode of Miami Vice entitled Bad Timing. His fourth and final album under contract with Arista Records was What Becomes a Legend Most. The album failed to make any impact in America, while the lead single, Tren Amor" just reached the top 100 in the UK. The song was featured on the motion picture soundtrack to She-Devil, starring Meryl Streep and Roseanne Barr. In 1989, Stewart sang Hot and Cold, co-written by Andy Summers, which was featured over the opening credits of the film Weekend at Bernie's. Andy Summers is best known for playing guitar in The Police. In the early 90s, Jermaine recorded an album entitled Set Me Free. The album marked a return to the dance-funk style of his pre-fame days. The title track was released 
as a single in the U.S., but sold poorly, and the album was never released. As his fortunes declined, Stewart was diagnosed with HIV himself and mostly withdrew from public life, sporadically returning to the studio to record music until his death from AIDS-related liver cancer on March 17, 1997, at the young age of 39. His family buried him at Homewood Memorial Gardens in the Chicago suburb of Homewood, Illinois. And oddly enough, another famous musician is buried in Homewood Memorial Gardens, and that's Juice World, who passed away in 2019 at the age of 21. I take prescriptions to make me feel okay. I know it's all in my head. Sadly, Stewart's burial site went without a tombstone or grave marker for 17 years. Following his death, the tabloids frequently linked Stewart to several actors and sports stars, but he remained discreet about his romantic liaisons, and those relationships remained unconfirmed. A tell-all book penned by Stewart was rumored to be imminent, but never materialized. Shortly before his death, Stewart returned to the studio to record a new album titled Believe in Me. Although the album was not completed, the finished tracks were released on the 2005 compilation Attention, a tribute to Jermaine Stewart, which was released under BFG Records, owned by Stewart's brother, who oddly enough passed away one year ago today. The 2007 song Close Off by Jim Class Hero sampled Stewart's signature song We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off. See, here's the thing. We have to take our clothes off. So sexy. On October 18, 2010, Cherry Red Records reissued his album Frantic Romantic on CD for the first time since 1986. It included bonus tracks, most notable of which are the 12-inch mixes of Jody and Dancefloor, making their CD debut. In 2011, the song We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off was used in a Cadbury advertisement in the UK called The Charity Shop. This exposed the hit to a new generation who downloaded the track and returned it to the UK singles chart, reaching number 29. He has been a noticeable inspiration to many other musical artists, including indie band Black Kids. Who? When speaking of We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off, in a 2008 interview with The Guardian, were quoted as saying, The song was just absurdly catchy. Now what's not great about the title? For a start, Jermaine Stewart was gay. But in the video, he's singing to a girl and basically saying, Hey, we don't have to take our clothes off to get to know each other. It's very nudge nudge wink wink. I was young when this song came out, so I didn't know he was gay. I just loved it because his voice is all high-pitched, and it's a real upbeat 80s pop song. I just thought, wow, what a great dancer. Indie pop singer Morgan, in a 2017 interview with Billboard, said of Jermaine, I knew I was different and drawn to a different kind of chord. Jermaine Stewart had this voice that could break you down and build you back up at the same time. He made me feel his heart, and he made me feel like I was okay in being myself. British soul singer Ella Ayres' We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off cover appeared on the 2013 compilation Virgin Records, 40 Years of Disruption. It is a far more, ironically, stripped-down version of the track that seems to be counterintuitive to the song's message, as it is very sensual. We don't have to take our clothes off to have a good time, oh no, and we go There is even a chocolate and cherry flavored lager by a Carnival Brewing Company known as the Jermaine Stewart Lager. I have loved the song We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off for as long as I can remember. It's such an upbeat, poppy love song that shoots down the norm of sex being the only thing on a man's mind. 
In a 1988 interview with DJ Donnie Simpson, Stewart said the song's inspiration was more than just sex. I think it made a lot of people's minds open up a little bit, Stewart said. We didn't only want to talk about clothes, we wanted to extend that. We wanted to use the song as a theme to be able to say, you don't have to do all the negative things that society forces on you. You don't have to drink and drive, you don't have to take drugs. So the clothes bit of it was to get people's attention, which it did, and I'm glad it was a positive message. The sad irony was that Jermaine wrote the song with Narada in response to the AIDS crisis of the 1980s, a stronger statement than anything the US government had made at that time. Despite the AIDS-related death tolls that were skyrocketing, the White House had yet to comment on the crisis. The year before We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off was released, the US Senate heard testimony from the Parents Music Resource Center, led by Tipper Gore and Susan Baker. I would like to point out, however, that we address ourselves not to the problem, but to the symptoms. I suggest that explicit lyrics and graphic videos are not so far removed from what is seen on television every day and night, whether it be in the soap operas or on the news. That we should point our finger at the recording industry while watching the general public at a nationally televised baseball game chant in unison, the Blue Jays suck, is ludicrous. The problem, Mr. Chairman, in my opinion, has to do with our willingness as parents to take responsibility for the upbringing of our children, to pay attention to their interest, to respond to their needs, and to recognize that we as parents and as individuals have a greater influence on our children and on each other than anything else could possibly have. The PMRC successfully fought for parental warning labels on music that had, quote, explicit content. The group compiled 15 objectionable songs, a list that became known as the Filthy 15. This was a powder keg that was sparked by the number one song on the list, Darling Nikki by Prince. As Tipper Gore walked in on her daughter listening to one of just many iconic lines from the song. Also on the list were Sugar Walls by Sheena Easton for mentioning sex, Eat Me Alive by Judas Priest for sex and violence, Strap On Robbie Baby by Vanity for sex, Bastard by Motley Crue for violence and language, Let Me Put My Love Into You by ACDC for sex, We're Not Gonna Take It by Twisted Sister for violence, Dress You Up by Madonna for sex, Animal by Wasp for sex, language, and violence, High and Dry parentheses Saturday Night by Def Leppard for drug and alcohol use, Into the Coven by Merciful Fate for occult, Trashed by Black Sabbath for drug and alcohol use, In My House by Mary Jane Girls for sex, Possessed by Venom for the occult, and Shebop by Cyndi Lauper for sex slash masturbation. Surprisingly, We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off, despite its overarching theme, was not on that list. A funny thing I found out, believe it or not, is that the music video for We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off was directed by David Fincher. Yes, that David Fincher. The best line of the song is a line that I definitely can get behind and endorse fully. A man wants to be approached cool and romantically. We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off has a BPM of 123. And for my cast and choice for the biopic for Jermaine Stewart, I'm choosing actor and writer Nicholas Ash. And for this week's love homework... I'm recommending a song that's the polar opposite of We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off. Get Some by Ghosted featuring Camille. I don't, I don't need no candlelight. You just need to fuck me right. Guess I ain't the loving kind. I just want to get some. I don't, I don't want to wait no more. Let's do it on the kitchen floor. Give me what I'm begging for. I just want to get some. And that's it the story behind We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off. If you like what you learned here today, please consider subscribing and tossing a like down below. I'll be releasing a new episode every Friday, and I'll also be taking requests. Until next time, my name is Richard Hunt, and you heard it in a love song. So what's, the, what's the image then? Well, the image, I think, I try to promote class. Mm -hmm. I try to be classy or whatever I do. Yeah. I want to, um, because you don't see a lot of entertainers these days mm -hmm. that dress nice, nicely dressed. Yeah. And yeah. I consider myself one of the, one of the most best dressed men, hopefully in '88. <laughs> you know. Right. But um, I try to change different. Every time you see Jermaine Stewart, Jermaine Stewart's gonna look different. Yeah. Whether it's the hair, whether it's the clothes, I'm mm -hmm. always be versatile enough to change mm -hmm. the image a little bit. 
you know, so because people get tired, I get tired of seeing the boring old suit, the old dirty old man, <laughs> same old suit on, you know. Same but old I like to have a nice mm-hmm. style, nice classy things, right. you know, sometimes trendy, uh-huh. but classy and stylish as well.